Hello everyone, welcome to the course on computer aided drug design. Today we are going to start a new topic that is called uh, molecular modeling. Molecular modeling involves modeling the three dimensional structure of the molecule because ultimately the molecule has a particular conformation when it goes and binds to the protein. So, we need to understand how to model that and how molecules uh, attain different types of uh, conformation based on the energies. Okay. So, uh, there are two approaches by which uh, we can uh, do the drug design, one is called the structure or ligand based design that means uh, uh, based on the drug structure based on the ligand structure. Okay. The other, other is called the target based design that means I know the target protein uh, where the drug will go and bind. So, I will design molecules based on the target structure. So, this is uh, based on the drug structure that means, I do not know any, any knowledge any information about my target whereas, uh, this is based on the target three dimensional active site. Okay. So, two different approaches. Uh, so, this is called structural ligand based design. Uh, in the ancient days, there was no knowledge about uh, getting the three dimensional structure of your target because uh, x ray crystallography proteomics was not there. So, generally they tested different compounds and uh, they found some compounds to be very active, then they started designing compounds uh, with similar structure. Okay. So, uh, the three dimensional structure of the protein was not known. So, it was predominantly the ligand based approach or structure based approach, um, but of late with the uh, evolving research and technology development in the area of proteomics, x-ray crystallography, LCMS, uh, 2D gel and so on, the target based approach became uh, very, very uh, fashionable or important because I will know which uh, target protein or enzyme uh, I am going to um, inhibit by designing a drug. So, um, all the drugs started being designed based on this. You can also combine both, we can do some screening using the ligand based approach and then we shift to the target based approach. Okay. In the ligand based approach, uh, so I know some structures, I know the chemical structures of some active compounds, we call it leads or heads um, and then so I design, synthesize new analogs with known bioactivity. Okay. So, and then uh, you do something called a quantitative structure activity relationship that means, what are the structural features required for the activity or I do something called a pharmacophore modeling that means, uh, I know what are the functional groups responsible for certain activities. So, I try to retain all these. Okay. Uh, so, I design new molecules uh, by retaining certain important functional properties, I design structure activity relationship and then of course, later on I use a drug likeness property, Lipinski's rule, ADME property all these to shortlist molecule. Okay. This is called the ligand based approach. Okay. So, in the past uh, many classes we did look at some of these things right, how to screen based on Lipinski's, how to screen based on drug likeness and then uh, how do you identify the structural similarities, but we are going to spend lot of time later on uh, QSIR that is quantitative structure activity relationship, uh, quantitative structure activity relationship, structure activity relationship okay? that is called a quantitative structure activity relationship the other is pharmacopore based approach. So, this is called the uh, ligand based uh, design. Okay. As you can see here, I do not know anything about the target protein uh, into which uh, the particular ligand okay, which you have got here is going to bind to. I, I have absolutely no knowledge about it. Now, the other approach is called the target based approach. That means, I have some knowledge about the three dimensional structure of the target. So, I design molecules. Um, so, that they go and bind very effectively uh, into the target forms a good interaction with the amino acids present and so on. So, that is called the target based approach. Okay. Uh, so, what does that involve? It involves many things. First, I need to know the mechanism of action. That means, I need to know how the drug goes and acts, what are the various pathways, what are the various enzymes involved and all. Then from there I identify a target. So, I will say there may be many enzymes, but I may decide on only one target okay, that is identifying 
the target. Now, um, I know the 3D structure of the target or I do not know the 3D structure of the target. Uh, for example, if you take um, inflammation, there are enzymes like cyclooxygenase 2, that enzyme for example, cyclooxygenase 2 um, is to be inhibited to prevent a certain inflammation. Uh, you may have the three dimensional structure of uh, cyclooxygenase 2 for uh, say uh, some mammals, but not for human. Okay? So, that sort of situation can happen. So, I do not have the details for human, but I may have for some animals. Um, so, if I have details uh, three dimensional structure um, of this enzyme, three dimensional structure is known, um, there is a database called PD. B protein data bank, uh, it contains three dimensional structure of large number of proteins. So, you go to that particular uh, database and see whether uh, the protein of your interest is there. So, if the three dimensional structure is known, what do I do? Life is very simple. So, uh, I have to identify the active site like uh, if you see in this picture, um, the drug goes and binds to the active site. So, I should know something about the active site. Okay either uh, from literature, um, I will know the active site or uh, when they crystallize and put the uh, three dimensional structure of the protein, they may have already some compound inside or ligand inside during the crystallization. So, I will consider that to be my active site. Okay? Otherwise, it is uh, a complex process, either I go to literature and find out or I look at various sites in the protein to determine what should be the active site. Okay? Imagine um, if the active site is known, uh, what do I do is uh, I bind uh, the uh, protein, the ligand to this uh, particular uh, protein and um, I see what is the binding energy, okay? that is called the binding energy uh, B E binding energy. So, based on the binding energy, I will say the interaction is very good or the interaction is very poor. Okay? So, uh, based on uh, three dimensional structure, based on the active site, um, I will uh, bind the protein, the ligand into the protein and calculate the binding energy and I will say if the binding energy is highly negative, then uh, it is very good, if the binding energy is poor, I will say the binding is not excellent. Um, this, uh, this route, if I know the three dimensional structure of the protein of interest. Suppose, I do not have idea about three dimensional structure of the protein. For example, I do not have uh, the three dimensional structure of the uh, cyclooxygenase 2 enzyme for human, but I may have for uh, a mouse or rat. Okay? Then I perform something called the homology modeling. Okay? This is very, very important I perform. So, what I will do is I will do a, uh, I will have the primary sequence data of the protein, then I will, uh, I will compare it with other proteins in the PDB and if there is some similarity, I take that protein and I develop a homology model using that protein as my template. Okay? So, that means, I build the three dimensional structure of the protein of my interest based on the three dimensional structure of another protein uh, which is similar in the sequence, okay? 30 percent, 35 percent similarity in the sequence. Once I do that, I come here, I will uh, look at the active site, I will decide on the active site like this picture and then I will bind my uh, ligands to the protein, I find out what is the binding energy. So, whether the binding energy is very good or the binding energy is poor, if the binding energy is very good, I will say uh, the ligand may have high activity and vice versa. Okay? This is how you do your target based design. Okay? These are the two different approaches, one is called the structural ligand based design, another is called the target based design. Okay? The structure based or um, ligand based design, I have no idea about my target. So, I will look at molecules which have shown good activity towards a particular uh, disease, then I will develop analogs, um, okay? known analogs, I may synthesize them. I may test their in vitro activity, I may develop a quantitative structure activity relationship or I may even develop a pharmacophore uh, model okay? and that is how I come up with new structures 
Um, and then um, I will of course use Lipinski's rule, rug likeness rules, ADME rules which we have seen uh, in the previous uh, many classes and uh, shortlist possible compounds. So, that is how these structure based works. Whereas, in the target based um, either I know the three dimensional structure of my target um, as here or whereas, I do not know the three dimensional structure of the target like here. If I know the three dimensional structure of the target, if I know the active side I bind many um, ligands to it and calculate the binding energy and then I will co correlate binding energy versus activity. So, if the binding is very good I will say it will have good activity, if the binding is poor I will say it will have poor activity. So, if the three dimensional structure of the protein of my interest is not there, but uh, uh, similar proteins uh, structures are available like I said uh, for human I might not have the um, 3 D structure of that protein, but I may have the 3 D structure um, analogous to a rat or a mouse. Then what I do is I do a homology model uh, that means, uh, I will build the 3 D of protein of my interest using the template of that protein ok that is called homology model. Once I do that um, then again I, this is called a modeled protein, uh, then I will bind my molecules and then um, see how the binding energy correlates with the activity. We can combine both the structure based approach and target based approach also for coming up with new uh, possible candidates. I will show you how it is in the next slide ok. So, um, um, here uh, this particular uh, picture shows how we can combine lot of uh, in silico uh, in vitro um, information ok. So, uh, imagine I have lot of uh, uh, structures based on uh, external databases like zinc and drug db. I showed you so many different data in house database I as a pharma company I have structures of maybe millions of compound. I will maybe get uh, on a payment basis databases from other collaborators or vendors. So, I will start looking at all these millions of molecules ok. Uh, what do I do? Um, I may develop a structure activity relation based screening. So, I will look at what are the structural features that gives you activity. So, I will neglect compounds which does not have those structural features ok. Um, I may take less number of compounds. After that uh, uh, if I know the target um, then I will bind all the molecules to the target ok and that is the target binding and see which molecules bind well which do not bind. So, I will take those which binds very well. Then I will apply Lipinski's rule of 5, I will apply toxicity rules, I will apply ADME drug likeness rules and then keep uh, removing compounds which do not seem to satisfy um, and then finally, come up with maybe hundreds of molecules. So, I may start with millions then uh, with the um, structure activity based uh, relationship I eliminate some by binding I eliminate some more, then I apply the Lipinski's rule, I will apply toxicity rules, I will apply ADME rules, drug likeness rules, BBB, PGB, HERG, um, uh, bio transformation stability, protein plasma binding. So, so many different rules and then I come up with a small number maybe hundreds. I can do a high throughput screening, um, I come up with the best candidates, hits we will call it, then I may go to animal models then I may go to human trials. So, this is how we can combine in silico techniques uh, with in vitro, in vivo preclinical studies ok. So, we need to have lot of uh, literature data initially, we need to have lot of databases initially to start the screening. So, when I use in silico methods I can use uh, millions of molecules because uh, I just need a computational resource to do this job. Um, whereas, a uh, real experimental may start from here ok much lower, whereas these are computational tools. Um, so, we can start with millions of molecules and apply different rules, different techniques uh, to a short list maybe thousands or hundreds ok. So, computers are extremely useful uh, in this area um, for molecular visualization. We can look at uh, uh, molecules, draw the structures, how they look like we can look at how the energy of the molecule changes based on their conformation ok. Uh, we can determine the minimum energy conformation as we call it that is called the minimum energy conformation. Conformation 
um, and then uh, what is the bioactive confirmation that means the confirmation which gives you the bioactive. We can look at the three dimensional pharmacophore generation we can uh, get the 3D structure of the molecules and then we can say uh, these functional groups are uh, important pharmacophores and um, then we can do molecular mimicry. Uh, we can align molecules suppose if there are 20 molecules which I have shown good activity we can align them together and then we can see what is the similarity uh, we can compare their physico chemical features such as electrostatic potential polar surface area and so on and then um, we can do docking like I said uh, dock the drug to the um, enzyme receptor and see how they dock we can look at the receptor map mapping then we can do quantitative structure activity relationship studies that means what are the structural features that gives you activity can I get a mathematical relation between the structural features and activity that sort of studies. We are going to talk more about all these in detail um, ok. So, so many things can be done using these uh, type of techniques ok. So many um, things can be done using uh, computational tools ok. So, we are going to look at uh, all of them. Uh, in the forthcoming classes. So, um, there are different computational approaches for molecular modeling one is called the force field based approach ok the force field based approach the other one is called the quantum mechanic approach. Force field based approach is the easiest one uh, it does not uh, require too much computer um, resources complexities. Um, but we can get only some set of parameters using force field based approach. We can get the structural properties that means three dimensional structure, we can get the shape of the molecule, we can look at uh, diffusion coefficient of the molecule all these these are called the force field based approach. So, here the tools are molecular mechanics tools ok the other approach is based on the quantum mechanics based approach. Here in quantum mechanics based approach we can look at energy required to break a bond, form a bond, thermochemical calculations, electronic calculations, optical calculations. So, we can do all these uh, using the quantum mechanics approach ok. Whereas, in the force field based approach or molecular mechanics based approach we cannot do uh, these type of calculations because uh, these calculations involve electronic energy. Here uh, we can do only structural features. Uh, we can look at the shape of the molecule, we can look at the diffusion coefficient, we can look at uh, uh, energy minimum energies ok. In the quantum mechanics again we have different types of quantum mechanics semi empirical quantum mechanics and um, this is a slightly easier version of uh, quantum mechanics other one is ab initio quantum mechanics which is detailed quantum mechanics. Again in ab initio we have two types the density function approach the Hartree folk approach and then as you go down it becomes correlated post Hartree folk approach. So, the quantum mechanics um, involves uh, looking at electrons, nucleus, interaction energies and in quantum mechanics again you have uh, the simpler version that is called semi empirical and the more detailed version that is called ab initio methods ok. So, we can get a lot of information about the molecule as we go down in the complexity in the computation um, uh, whereas, if you want to look at uh, uh, a ligand binding to a protein we do not go into quantum mechanics we generally use a force field approach because force field approach can handle thousands of atoms whereas, uh, quantum mechanics can handle only hundreds of atoms whereas, if you go to ab initio type of methods you can handle only tens of atoms. So, depending upon the amount of data as uh, you want uh, depending upon the size of the molecule we decide on what type of approach we need to do. But if you are interested in bond formation bond breaking electronic energy we cannot do it by force field approach we have to do by quantum mechanics approach. So, if you are interested in a um, docking of ligands if you are interested in looking at the diffusion coefficient if you are looking at the molecular dynamic type of studies if you are looking at confirmations the molecules can take uh, it is good enough to do use force field approach or molecular mechanics type of approach because it is simpler uh, it is faster ok. So, the level of complexity computational resource requirement keeps going up as we go down this line ok. So, we will we will spend more time on this uh, force field and molecular mechanics approach and less time on the other quantum mechanics approach ok. So, uh, 
two major computational methods as I said one is called the quantum mechanics the other is called the molecular mechanics or force field. Okay, so, what is quantum mechanics? So, nuclear and electrons of the molecules are considered. So, it differentiates electrons, nucleus. Uh, giant quantum physics problem requires many approximations because uh, if I am going to do tau, a molecule which has got thousands of atoms, I cannot go very deep into the quantum mechanics. So, I have to use many approximations, this is very, very important to make these problems tractable. Uh, nuclear are motionless, that means we assume nucleus electrons move, electrons move independently of one another, okay. we may consider only the electrons in the outermost orbit which form the bond, we will ignore the electrons inside uh, like that you know. So, in the quantum mechanics like I said we have the ab initio method which is very rigorous from first principles, no stored parameters or data takes a long time restricted to small molecules, semi empirical faster less accurate can be used on large molecules, these are the methods MNDO, AM1, PM3, you will come across these names uh, often. This is useful for mol um, molecular orbital energy, partial charges, electrostatic potentials, dipole moments. So, we can use even semi empirical methods to calculate all these things. Okay. These are very useful when um, you want to consider how a ligand goes and binds into the active site. So, I want to know the electrostatic forces. I want to know the partial charges okay. all these information can be obtained from this actually. There are no stored parameters in ab initio method whereas, semi empirical methods assume some parameters. So, it makes the calculations much simpler. So, this is the quantum mechanics method two, uh, two divisions the ab initio and the other one is the semi empirical. The ab initio is much more detailed uh, whereas, uh, we cannot do for too many um, atoms only for small the other one is semi empirical we can do lot of things with semi empirical methods ok it can uh, uh, it is much faster than ab initio methods and so on ok. Now, the second approach in fact, uh, we are going to talk more about this uh, because uh, most of the ligand protein docking is done through molecular mechanics uh, predominantly ok they are based on the following principles. Uh, it ignores nucleus and electrons and they are lumped into atom like particles ok. So, it is like balls, they are spherical in shape, uh, the radius obtained from measurements or theory and have a net charge obtained from theory. So, they are spherical in shape, they have charge, interactions are based on springs ok. So, Hooke's law comes into picture ok, uh, the energy is uh, proportional to um, delta x square delta x is the change in the spring length. Okay. So, interactions are based on springs and classical potentials that is Hooke's law. Interactions are pre assigned to specific set of atoms. Okay. So, we have a, a carbon carbon interaction we will get different uh, constant values, carbon nitrogen will have different constant values and so on. Interactions determine the spatial distribution of atoms and their energies that means, if uh, um, some bonds get pulled or some bonds get pushed, some bonds get bent. Okay. So, we have uh, different conformations the molecule takes that is what it is on the spatial distribution. So, two types of uh, techniques uh, the molecular mechanics, the other one is the quantum mechanics. Uh, quantum mechanics differentiates electrons and nucleus. In quantum mechanics, we have two types ab initio and semi empirical. Semi empirical is the easier version of uh, quantum mechanics, okay, um, uh, which can also determine lot of uh, important uh, information, but it assumes uh, um, certain parameters stored parameters, uh, it, neg it neglects many aspects that are considered in ab initio, ab initio is good for only tens of atoms. Uh, so, in our molecular modeling we hardly use ab initio, we use generally the uh, force field or molecular mechanics method and little bit of semi empirical methods. The molecular mechanics methods assumes uh, the atom as a ball, it does not uh, look at nucleus and electrons and the bonds as springs. So, springs get stretched, springs bend, bend and there could be um, um, okay, interactions um, because of uh, the stretching and bending aspects. Okay. So, two types the molecular mechanics approach or uh, force field approach, other one is called the Ab, um, quantum mechanics in quantum mechanics we have uh, the ab initio and the semi empirical method. 
Okay, force field approach. We'll spend. We are, as I said, we are going to spend a lot of time on force field approach. Uh, it is used to calculate st structure. We can get the three-dimensional structure of the molecule, conformations, dynamics. We can do molecular dynamics. We can calculate diffusion coefficient. We can calculate total energies. Total energy. Uh, what's the uh, energy of uh, minimum energy? We can calculate entropies, free energies, diffusion. Any property related to electronic structures cannot be done with the molecular mechanics approach. Electrical conductivity, optical conductivity, magnetic properties are not accessible from force field calculations because it does not differentiate the electron and the nucleus. It assumes an atom as a ball. Okay. So, we can do free energy calculations, shape, diffusion, uh, conformations, but anything beyond that cannot be done. Okay, so, the in the force field approach energy there are four terms uh, stretching energy that means, uh, if you have uh, the bond, bond can get stretched or it can be compressed. Bending energy if there are uh, two bonds uh, three atoms two bonds there could be bending. Okay. Third one is uh, torsion energy, torsion energy is like a, um, in the third dimension and the fourth one is the non bonded interaction. There could be interaction between atoms which are not connected because of electrostatic forces, because of van der Waal forces. Okay. So, energy of a molecule is made up of four terms stretching energy, the bond gets stretched or uh, uh, compressed, bending energy if there are three atoms with two bonds uh, there is a bending. Uh, torsion is the um, uh, change in the third dimension, fourth is the non bonded interaction energy. There are different types of force field, um, so there are force fields for organic molecules, for proteins, we will look at it for uh, say inorganic molecules like zeolites and uh, of course, there are some universal force fields and so on. Um, so, there are many different uh, softwares many different force fields depending upon um, what type of parameters they have, what type of approximations this uh, uh, each of these force fields have taken. So, we have uh, uh, the energy of a molecule is made up of four terms the stretching, bond stretching, uh, bending, torsion, non bonded interaction. Okay. So, we will look at each one of these term uh, now in more detail. The first one. Uh, look at this assume there are uh, uh, there is a molecule with four uh, uh, atoms or four balls connected with three bonds. So, this is the bond stretching um, the bond gets pulled or bond gets pushed inside. So, we can have both um, delta x is the change in the bond length um, either plus or minus, but uh, when you calculate energy like I said it is based on Hooke's law. So, it will become delta s square angle bending. So, we have a uh, uh, three uh, we have three balls or three atoms connected with two springs or two bonds. So, we can angle can be bent here. Okay. So, there is energy. Now, we have torsion suppose you look at these three atoms turned twisted in the third dimension that is called the torsion energy. The fourth one is called non bonded interaction look at this uh, molecule these two are not connected through any bond, but there could be some interaction because of electrostatic charges van der Waal forces that is called the non bonded interaction. So, a molecule can have four types of energy terms the bond stretching okay, here, the bond angle bending here, the torsion the non bonded interaction. So, if you have uh, terms mathematical relationship for each one of them and um, we add up all these that should give us the total energy uh, of a molecule. Okay. There, there could be many bond stretching, there could be many angle bending, there could be many torsion, there could be many non bonded interactions that are possible. Okay. So, we will look at each uh, uh, one of these uh, mathematical terms. The first one is the bond stretching this is based on Hooke's law like I said. So, energy uh, is equal to um, k b, k b is a constant, okay. k b is a constant we have r minus r naught uh, square 
okay. or is the distance or not is the number um, which uh, the distance will be or the bond length will be at equilibrium. Um, so, this shift in R not to R squared that will contribute to the energy there is a constant k b this is summation. Okay. For example, if I have a say uh, 2 uh, carbon ethane okay, carbon carbon, but when I put in another carbon uh, like a propane another carbon butane that uh, length will not be constant it may get stretched right that could be r whereas r naught could be the uh, distance um, at equilibrium when it is not stretched. So, this square because hook law like I said delta x square uh, uh, k b k b is a constant. So, I need to know um, the k b I need to know r naught to calculate the energy. Now, this uh, r naught can vary depending upon what each of these uh, atoms are. For example, I may have carbon carbon, carbon nitrogen, carbon uh, oxygen, carbon sulfur. So, the r naught can change and k b also can change. And in addition uh, carbon carbon the distance is not going to be same you may have uh, carbon carbon sp 3. So, that will have some distance you may have carbon carbon double bond we call it sp 2 that distance r naught may be different you may have carbon carbon triple bond we call it sp that distance is different. So, I need a database which contains all these information. So, when I draw a structure the software should identify what type of carbon carbon it is and then it will pick up the correct uh, um, R naught and correct K B okay, and calculate the energy. So, I need to have lot of parameters okay, that is very very important parameters. So, uh, molecular mechanics requires lot of parameters um, like I said uh, not only carbon oxygen, carbon nitrogen, carbon uh, sulfur, but in, in bet within carbon carbon I may have sp 3 carbon, carbon carbon in aliphatic, carbon carbon in aromatic uh, and carbon carbon in 5 membered ring. So, each one of them will have different R naught, different K B. Uh, similarly, carbon oxygen can be a ether bond, can be a ketone bond, can be in a um, in a benzene ring can be in a 5 membered ring. Uh, so, you will have different values for R naught and K B for different situations. So, I need a big database of that and that is called parameterization. So, I need to have parameters. So, each software uh, may have different uh, sets of parameters taken from literature. Um, some softwares may ignore some parameters. So, when you run different force field I will get different energy values. So, if I am doing calculations for a set of molecules do not change the force field use the same force field um, otherwise you will get different answers Be why because uh, your parameter values may be different depending upon from which literature they took and uh, some softwares may ignore some type of uh, uh, situations or environment. So, you will always get different uh, energy values. Okay? So, we will continue more on this uh, um, molecular mechanics or force field based energy. Thank you very much for your time.